Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. I know I've got some different kids watching these videos at different times, so whichever of those uh, pertains to you. Uh, before I, I start uh, our next video today, a couple things that I sort of want to uh, discuss with you, uh, or at least kind of tell you about, I suppose. Um, you know, as you're watching uh, my videos, I, I try to keep these things maybe 20 minutes or less. Um, sometimes it's kind of hard to do that, but you know, as you're watching them at home, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to, I don't know, you maybe watch five, 10 minutes and then maybe pause, take a break, and maybe come back and watch the other five, 10 minutes or so. I, I get it. I, I mean, I understand that sometimes you, you know, watching 20, 30 minutes of, of a science video isn't exactly the most exciting thing in the world. So maybe sometimes you need a break. So, you know, again, maybe take that uh, approach. Maybe watch the first half of the video, you know, stop, we'll get a drink, whatever, walk around for a little bit, and then come back and watch the other half. I, I have no problem with that. You guys are at home, so do whatever you need to do. Another thing uh, also, uh, when, when, it, when it comes to, to, the, to the lecture notes and to the lecture videos, uh, I'm going to try to, and in fact, I, I should always be doing this for you, but I'm going to be providing you with a, a hard copy of the lecture notes, which accompany these PowerPoint slides. This is kind of up to you. Every student is kind of different as, as far as how they want to take notes or if they even want to take notes. It's completely up to you. Uh, but I will be providing either a link online to where you can access uh, the, the, the fill-in notes. And if you're at home, I guess you can print those out. That's the only way you can do it. Uh, if you're at school, uh, I'll have those for you when you walk in. And again, you can just fill those in as you go. Basically what I do is I just print out the PowerPoint slides and kind of fill in the blank type of thing. But some people learn better that way, you know, by actually writing while they're listening. Uh, might be a good idea for some of you to do that. Uh, the bottom line is, these notes are a really good source of material to study from. So I might suggest that you actually do have those notes. At minimal, uh, just make sure that you look over these PowerPoints and look over these notes because a lot of the stuff that you'll be tested over uh, does come from these. So anyway, let's get started. So this is really our first lecture uh, over the material. You know, up to this point, we've just been watching you know, boring videos about the syllabus and um, you know, the AP exam and, and, you know, welcome back to school videos, all that type of stuff. So we'll start today uh, with a, a topic that I think is a really good idea to kind of get the ball rolling with environmental sciences, kind of looking at the current state of our planet. You know, throughout the year, we're going to talk about a lot of things going on, you know, on our planet uh, that are problematic. You know, most of the stuff that we're going to talk about are, are problems that are caused by humans. But let's let's first start today about just again talking about the current state uh, of the planet, and I, I like to use um, different geographical locations around the world as I as I kind of explain some of these problems. And we're going to use this one today. You know, this is the state of North Carolina. For those of you that know your geography, I guess. And I want us to focus here on, a, on an area of, of the state. It's called the Noose River. And if you've never heard of the Noose River, most people probably haven't. But uh, it, it kind of runs through you know, sort of the central part of the state. And eventually, you got to follow my cursor here, it, it kind of empties out eventually into the Atlantic Ocean. But it's the biggest river in the state of North Carolina. It's close to 275 miles long. Uh, it provides fresh water for over 2 million people uh, in the state. If you'll notice kind of up here, a couple pretty big cities, you know, Raleigh, North Carolina, which is the capital, Greensboro, Durham, North Carolina. I mean, there's some really large uh, areas of people that live along this river. So it's a major source of fresh water uh, for people who live in the state of North Carolina. Anyway. Now, an interesting thing happened in the Noose River back in the 1990s. Uh, in about a five or six year span, uh, scientists noticed that over a billion, that's with a B, billion, fish 
died in the Neuse River. You know, I mean, and we would actually see, you know, pictures like this. You know, we would see like all of these fish, you know, just washed up on the shore. This was a very common occurrence. I mean, imagine if, I don't know, you, you, you walked up on the banks of Cedar Lake or Lake Michigan or somewhere like that and, and, and saw, you know, all of these fish just washed up on the shore. I mean, it would probably cause some alarm. I mean, people were like, well, what's going on in our river? You know, why are all these fish dying and why are they all just kind of being washed up on the beach? Well, what they found out was that there was a little organism called Fisteria in my picture over here on the right. This is a little uh, Fisteria um, organism. It's a, it's a little protist that, that, that normally lives in fresh water. You know, it's, it's, it's something that's found in a lot of different freshwater ways around the country, around the world. But normally, this Fisteria protist doesn't really cause any harm to anyone or anything. But what they found out was that it was causing the deaths of all of these fish, just like all of a sudden, right? So, I mean, like good scientists, they were like, well, you know, why was this happening? You know, it never really happened before. All of a sudden, this is occurring, you know, in the Noose River. Well, to understand really why it was occurring, we have to kind of look at, at what Fisteria kind of does. You know, Fisteria, again, normally is, is harmless, but anytime the protist is under stress, We'll talk about what that is in a second. The, these organisms produce a, a chemical. It's called a neurotoxin. Now, neuro you know, refers to nerves or brain. Okay, toxin is poison. So what was happening in the Noose River was these normally harmless microorganisms all of a sudden started producing this massive amount of neurotoxin. And when it gets into the water, it actually gets into the lungs of the fish and it neutralizes the fish. It kind of stuns them. So then what the, what the protist does, it kind of burrows itself into the, into the uh, digestive system of the fish. If you look at the, the, the picture here, these little holes that are in the fish, you know, that's, the, that's the protist that kind of gets inside and multiplies and kind of eats its way through the fish. But Again, normally this isn't really something that happens, you know, in the Noose River. This is kind of an abnormal thing that the Fisteria were doing. Um, if, if humans were to come in contact with the water that has these neurotoxins in it, uh, there's a bunch of symptoms, uh, you know, talk, talks here about them having sores that don't heal, memory loss, impaired vision, uh, the immune system will will not function properly. You know, respiratory illness. I mean, a whole bunch of problems. So, you can probably see why, you know, in North Carolina back in the 1990s, when people found out that the water was contaminated with these neurotoxins, uh, people really didn't want to go into that water. I mean, they were very leery. So it caused like some public um, awareness and some people were kind of freaking out about the whole Noose River thing. All right. So the next thing that you know they had to figure out was why was the Fisteria, which normally doesn't you know cause any problems, why were they becoming so stressed to release those neurotoxins, right? Well, what they found out was it was actually being caused by hog farms. You might think, well, how could a hog farm, you know, cause fisteria to, you know, you know in a river to release all these chemicals, these, these neurotoxins? Well, one thing about North Carolina, I'm going to go to this next slide real quick, and I'll come back to that previous one. If you look at this map here, okay, here's, your, here's your Noose River right here, again, right through the middle of the state. You see all these red dots. Those red dots, each one of them is a hog farm. North Carolina is considered to be the hog farming capital of the world. I mean, there are just a tremendous amount 
of hog farms in you know kind of this kind of south central area of of North Carolina and and many of them are all along the Noose River okay now going back to this real quick you know the big thing about hog farms is I don't care if you have one hog farm or you got 500 hog farms hogs are going to poop you're going to have hog waste right and all that waste has to go somewhere well if you look at the picture here guess where a lot of that hog waste ends up it ends up in the noose river so when all that hog waste goes into the river and we'll learn more about this as the year goes on but hog poop really any type of animal poop uh it has things in it you know it has things like nitrates and phosphorus in it things like that 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 the fisteria actually use as food so the more hog poop that goes into the water the more food that the fisteria have and what it did is it caused the fisteria bloom it caused all these protists to just overpopulate so imagine like if you were in a room you know by yourself and all of a sudden 500 kids came in the room with you right you would kind of feel kind of crammed kind of stressed well that's what the fisteria do when they when they start overpopulating they get stressed out and they start releasing these chemicals to kind of you know, make it known that they don't like being stressed. And that's why the fish were dying. So, you know, this is they, they, so scientists figured out that, you know, these hog farms were actually causing the fisteria bloom. All right. So, I mean, big deal, right? We got a, we got a river, we got some fish that died. Okay. I mean, whatever. Well, here's kind of what really ended up happening, you know, near the Noose River. There was a huge economic downswing. You know, think about what think about if 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 you lived in this area, you know, near the you know, near the Noose River. You know, the, the local fishing industry was devastated. I mean, nobody wanted to eat fish that came from the Noose River, you know, probably for good reason. So those fishermen either had to go somewhere else or they didn't make any money, right? So that fishing industry really, you know, was was broken. The restaurant industry. Imagine if you have a seafood restaurant near the Noose River, and all of a sudden, you know, people start hearing on the news about all the chemicals in the river and the dead fish and people getting sick. Well, the restaurant industry took a huge hit, right? Economically, a big problem. Tourism. You know, there's golf courses, there's vacation spots in North Carolina. People didn't want to go there. You know, so the tourism definitely declined in the area. Real estate property values declined. I mean, imagine owning a $500,000 house, then all of a sudden in a matter of a couple of months or a couple of years, your property value gets cut in half, all because people are scared to, to move to the area you know, all because of the, the, the environmental problems that are going on there. So this was all a major, major issue or all major issues that occurred as a result uh, of the Noose River. Now, the solution, you know, even though you might think, well, the solution would be let's just get rid of the hog farms. Eh, that's not really that easy of a solution. Right? I mean, those hog farms are there for a reason. Right. I mean, people like bacon. Right. People like sausage. People like, you know, pig products, you know, not just in our country, but all around the world. You know, we've got, you know, millions and millions of people in this country who every single morning, you know, have an egg McMuffin for breakfast. And what's on that egg McMuffin? You know, sausage and bacon. So, you know, just getting rid of those probably isn't an easy thing. But this was a problem that was caused by people. Now, there's a term here, it's called anthropogenic. This is a big word that I'm gonna use a lot this year in class. Anthropogenic just means it's caused by humans. And if it's caused by humans, it can be fixed by humans. Even though the, the, the fix, you know, the, the problem uh, may not have an easy solution, you know, we have to look into ways to fix it. And, and, and you know, in the case of, let's say the Noose River, I mean, politics come into play, you know, money comes into play. I mean, what are all these farmers going to do? I mean, are they just going to pick up and move? I mean, that's going to cost them a lot of money. So there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of issues 
that surround some of these problems that need to be fixed. And there really isn't an easy solution. You know, one of the things in the Noose River that they've done is they've um, passed laws that restrict hog farmers from dumping X amount of waste into the river. Can they still dump some waste in there? Yeah, but they actually try to limit how much, and the government actually tracks to see what they're doing. So that probably is a part of the solution, but you know there really is no easy answer to some of this stuff. All right, last slide here. You know, the, the, the Noose River is kind of a microcosm for a lot of the bigger problems that we have on this planet. But again, a lot of these problems are caused directly by human beings. You know, human beings have been around on this planet for only about two and a half million years, which if you think about how old the planet is, it's really not that long of a period of time. But for, for most of that time, really humans weren't that big of a problem. I mean, yeah, like in these pictures here, for example, yeah, we were like using fire and stone tools and, you know, hunting woolly mammoths and things like that. But as far as like, you know, doing a lot of destruction to the environment, eh, not, not really that much for, for a long time. But in the last 200 years, give or take, we've done a lot more damage. And really, you know, if we think about all the things that we build, you know, technological advances, you know, whether it be buildings or, or whatever it is, medical advances, we're living longer, you know, agricultural, you know, we, we have to feed people, right? So we have to come up with better ways to grow food and to transport that food. But a lot of that stuff has happened in the last 200 years. All right, I'm going to conclude the video today, there, there, or conclude this um, lecture today. There is a video clip that I want you to watch. I put it on Buzz. There's a link here to it. I think the link works. If not, it's, it's on Buzz. It's a video called Man. It's a couple minutes long. It's a cartoon. But when you watch the video, I want you to kind of think about your own lifestyle and think about some of the problems that humans, uh, I guess, pose to our planet. I think after you watch this video, you'll probably um, have a good idea of a lot of the things that we're going to talk about this year in this class. All right, folks, have a good day. That's it for me. Uh, check your buzz agendas. Thank you.